Hello, beautiful soul. I'm very excited to connect with you because we have another interview in our series about holistic healing. It's the latest book published by Make Your Mark Global. And today I'm having a conversation with Dr. Margot Livingston. And she is this very accomplished integrative health consultant, an advanced nurse practitioner. She's got a PhD in immunology, very handy during COVID. But what is interesting is how she's been able to uncover how things in her childhood affected her mental health. Now, fortunately today, this is common knowledge. We now know that the adverse childhood experiences that we experience before the age of 18 can impact our mental health as well as our physical health. But what is not often talked about is how to overcome the things of the past. Well, it really does often take a holistic approach and insight or awareness into what you're dealing with. And so I'm really grateful that Margot shared so openly and courageously her story. And I think if you are dealing with health issues or you know someone who has repeated problems in a certain area in their life, this is an interview that's gonna shed a whole lot of light on that. So please tune in and listen to the story of Dr. Margo Livingston. Dr. Margo Livingston, it is such a pleasure to connect with you again. And thank you for sharing your story in this book about holistic healing. Thank you, Andrea. It's really fantastic to, to be here. And I really, really enjoyed the process of writing my chapter for this book. Thank you so much for interviewing me today. Well, you are very brave and courageous. You share a lot in this chapter in the book and one of the things that you said you were really surprised in writing this story uh, you talk about how at a very young age you lost your father but as you started writing the story you realized you lost a whole lot more tell us about how your childhood impacted your health and how we got to this place yeah yeah i i i i um I was born in Rhodesia, which is now called Zimbabwe, and my mum and dad were both from Glasgow in Scotland. My father worked in um, in Kenya during the war, and he really, really adored Africa and moved there as soon as the war was over. So my sister and I were both born um, in Rhodesia. We had a really happy life. Um, and then unfortunately, my father died very, very suddenly, age 39, of, of a brain hemorrhage. Um, and we had you know, we had gone to Cape Town. My mum and dad had saved up all year for this big holiday. Um, and it was just such a shock for everybody. And But I think, as you know yourself, Andrea, as a child, everything seems okay. Everything's happy. Everything's positive. You never feel sad, really, except for like when you fall and hurt your knee or something. But, you know, I didn't actually realise the profound impact it was going to have on the rest of my life. Um, and obviously my mother put on a very brave face and got us back up to to Rhodesia and then took us back to live um, in Scotland because she felt that we couldn't really survive with her on her own as a single mother um, in Africa. And when I, I did I did realise that it had affected my life, but I didn't really realise how much it affected, how it related back to that event until I started studying personal development in my in my late forties, really. Um, and and I just couldn't even believe. Um, the impact that it had on me and now it's a passion of mine to try and help people realize that major traumatic events uh, in those very formative years between zero and seven um, have such an incredible profound impact on the rest of your life so I when I was writing the chapter I I just suddenly realized my goodness I I lost my dad but yes I lost my home in Africa which was my whole base you know um, uh, I lost my uh, my home my house um, and I and I lost my dog, which I talk yeah. about in the in the story, you know, because he was he was my you know soulmate, and I totally adored him. But my mother, in her own wisdom, in those days, she decided she couldn't bring him back to the UK. Yeah. She didn't warn us, so it was a really really traumatic time when uh, she took us and the dog ran after the car, you know. So yeah, the whole thing really was like everything in my life just was shattered in in that one in that one event. And it kind of molded my my struggle um, from from going back to the UK. I never fitted in. I, I always felt a bit lost. I didn't make friends easily. I didn't understand why I was there. 
Um, so yeah, it did really affect everything. Yeah. So tell me, what do you think the effect of losing your home, losing your dog, and losing your father, most importantly, at such a young age, how did that impact your health? And what was the difference that you noticed in your sister's health? And also, I think you mentioned relationships. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, I, I didn't think that I was ill. I mean, physically, I was obviously a very healthy human being, but I, I didn't realize the profound impact it had on my mental health. I didn't realize that it was a mental health problem not to be able to form good friendships or, you know, when it, when I got old enough to form relationships. I was actually literally ter terrified of men. I didn't understand them. I didn't know anything about them. And, and I didn't realize I had this whole subconscious thing going on that men were the breadwinners um, and that men would leave you. You know, my father was the breadwinner and he left. And my, and my mother started to worry about money from that moment forward for the rest of my life until my mother died. She worried about money. And so I had this belief that I wasn't... Um, safe um, that I wasn't uh, safe unless a man was going to take care of the money and yet my my father had died and I grew up with with women you know my sister and my mother so I didn't know how men ticked I didn't know how to relate to men at all so when it came to forming relationships with men um, it was really really impossible for me I, I used to um, I subconsciously turn them away I would push mm -hmm. them away because when they liked me a lot and wanted to be with me, I would think, well, they're going to leave me, right? So I'm, I might as well preempt this. So I, I realized when I got into personal development and, and natural healing and all of these things, I realized that I had this uh, innate, innate belief that I was going to be, uh, that I was kind of unlovable, that my father had left me, even though he didn't mean to, I still felt totally unlovable. Mm. Um, and I felt that I couldn't um, survive financially without a man uh, in my life. So even though I knew that, I was pushing them away. So it was a real dichotomy. But my sister, she was two years older than me. And um, and she was a kind of quieter person. I, I became a bit, bit of a rebel. You know, I... I love to be non-conformist, you know, I don't like rules, um, but Judy was always really into being a good girl, you know, and uh, both of us became very studious, and both of us did really well at university. Judy always wanted to be a doctor, um, and she became a medical doctor, she was a phenomenal doctor, um, but she kind of internalised everything when she had trauma, she would just uh, really internalise, and I think she adopted that from, from when dad died, I think she 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 developed this need to help mom and to look after me and 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 uh, she eventually died of a brain tumor um like two weeks after her 40th birthday which was a total tragedy but um as i studied you know alternative health and healing and personal development i realized that internalizing your trauma internalizing your grief is very 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 bad for your health long term and um, and it can actually kill you, which it did in Judy's case. I believe that, you know, her trauma did eventually lead to her developing cancer. And that it's just, it's it's been fascinating for me as a, a medical doctor to hear things like what you're describing, uh, you, because you went and you, you studied immunology, you became a doctor, you became a, a nurse practitioner. So when people like us get together and we talk about the fact that bottling up your emotions and not processing trauma leads to illness in the body, the, the first time that I realized that, I was just a young physician. And when I tried to share it with someone, they, they looked at me like I was crazy, you know? Um, and so I think right now, the, the reason why I'm really grateful that you're sharing this story is because we do have things that happen in childhood, whether it's divorce or it's losing a parent, that imprint lasts for a lifetime. And very often, people aren't even aware that the symptoms they're feeling or the challenges they have with money, with relationships, or with their health, they don't realize that there's a link and that you can go back and heal and, and process those original wounds. And so now with your work, you're an integrated medical consultant. You've actually incorporated qigong you've got this total health makeover program how what what do you think is kind of the future for you in helping people achieve you know optimal well-being 
Yeah, thank you for that. No, I totally and utterly agree with you. It was just such a profound uh, realization when I when I realized that my childhood had caused all my kind of problems in life. Well, you know, it was the root cause, and also that that could be rectified. And and I, you know, I'm passionate about sharing that. As you know, Andrea, the same as yourself, you've dedicated your life to try and help people. Um, feel better uh, whether it be through helping therapists like myself to help others or through you helping others you know it's absolutely fundamental because you know we were born to to be happy and joyful just like we are when we're children you just have to look at a baby and know that that's the way we're kind of meant to be and it's just so sad and so tragic when people lose that joie de vivre and that trust and that love you know they, they, they get it beaten out of them through um you know parents that don't really understand um, um peers teachers you know and and I'm, my passion in life is to help as many people as possible to understand that they are in total control of their own health and their own healing and their own um prosperity uh, uh, and their 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 overall life which includes relationships making money and being successful in what you do, happy in what you do, and to be healthy. To be healthy is the most important and fundamental thing that we can have. And I, I know that most of us, fortunately, very fortunately, are born with innate health and well-being, mental and physical, um, and that we can revert back to that. And it's not taught in mainstream Western medicine or science um, or school, sadly. Um, and I'm hoping that, that that we can together as a collective, you know, help help shift that balance. So my life is dedicated towards helping as many people as I possibly can to regain their total health. And I've called it a total health makeover. My website is drmargolivingston.com and in there you will find my five pillars of, of health and I'm talking about um, integrating East with West because I started a very traditional background of education uh, in school. You know, I didn't do medicine because I never really knew what I wanted to do, whereas Judy, my sister, was totally like she wanted to be a doctor and that was it. And I really admired and followed and copied her. Um, but I did I did immunology and I loved it. It just literally been launched as a topic. And it's so relevant right now with COVID-19 and, yeah. and, you know, people are learning so much about stress and how your immune system needs to be healthy for you to avoid any kind of infection whatsoever. So that's kind of my Western background. And I did nursing because I was living in underdeveloped countries with my first husband. Um, and he, I, I managed to persuade him to take me back to Africa um, as soon as I got married at 21. But it wasn't quite colonial Zimbabwe. <laughs> but I did learn loads from all my travels. And um, I became an advanced nurse practitioner, which is the highest you can really go as a nurse. Um, I've got an MSc in advanced nursing. So now I see patients, I see clients locally and online, and I talk to people about current health issues, assessment, diagnosis, medication review, all of those things. But I try to intermingle and introduce the possibility of um, healing naturally through the methods that I used, which are Qigong was fundamental in helping me to really center and regain my my core, my core connection to my source energy to, yeah. to, to, to be able to tap into, ask for healing and to, you know, allow myself to drop resistance and just accept the divine, you know, love that mm. we have all around us. Yeah. So yeah. So so the Western side, uh, you know, involves psychotherapy as well. I'm a psychotherapist. I use three principles intervention um, by Sidney Banks. Unfortunately, he's no longer alive, but he was just such an incredibly spiritual and enlightening um, person to learn from. And then I've introduced my Eastern pillars in terms of the feng shui. Um, Qigong is obviously Eastern as well, and you can use that for exercises just to center your own energy, but also one-to-one -one healing I do uh, using Qigong. And, and I've got very interested in feng shui and bioenergetics mm. um, because these are all about the energy of our environment, and our environment is vital, absolutely yeah. vital. You know, we are in an energy environment, and yeah. it's not just us. And so we need to get all of those things aligned for perfect health. And that's that's really my mission as a, an integrated medical consultant. Well, the other piece of what you're offering now is also this keto kickstart program. What was it 
you know, in all of your travels and studies, what is it about keto that has inspired you to, to really focus on that? Well, um, I, I studied body sculpting several years ago as well. Um, I trained with another spiritual healer and I, I learned that um, we can uh, maximize our physique um, through doing weightlifting exercises combined with a ketogenic diet. And it was really another, see, all the things I've learned have just been so fascinating to learn. And I love anything which really gets to the core of, of, of how to heal ourselves simply and effectively without medication and anything like that. So I, I, I run my own gym and I run classes online, Andrea, um, as well to help people with their physique. So I help people who are maybe even people who have got Parkinson's disease and, you know, motor neuron type disorders, they can follow exercises um, from a seated position. So it's not all about being a, a bodybuilder, but it's about just getting the, the, the core strength of your body optimized. Um, and together with that, obviously, what we eat and drink is very fundamental in our overall health. It forms our building blocks for our, for our body and our cells and our skeleton and all the rest of it. And I realized through my, my training, in body sculpting that keto ketogenic um, nutrition and this was um 15 years ago you know whereas now it's really a buzzword and a very yeah. um very very trendy thing to do but i've been i've been teaching this for many years and it's a way to kick start your metabolism back into healthy um alignment so it's you know um it's not necessary to always have carbohydrates in your diet you can easily and effortlessly take you know, two weeks out and have absolutely no carbs. Um, and it was actually designed by a guy called Leo H. Blair, who trained top Hollywood models back in the 30s, this diet that I that I teach. So you have no carbs um, for 14 days, and but you can eat whatever you like. Um, you can eat proteins, you can eat loads of vegetables. Um, and, you know, you obviously need to keep up your vitamins and minerals. And, uh, and it works incredibly well. People lose inches, they lose up to 15 inches. I'm trying to think what that is in centimetres, maybe 30, um, 20 to 30 centimetres. Incredibly, you can lose inches off your body within a very, very short space of time if you follow this plan. Yeah, wonderful. Well, you really are like the, the, the epitome of holistic integrative healing, mind, body, soul, environment nutrition movement like all of it is there yes yes thank you yes no it's, it's been a lovely it was it was just a recent realization as well andrea that i you know when i sat down um before covid i started looking at this as myself as a as this really incredible person that that could offer a, a complete health makeover i didn't realize that before um, and then COVID-19 and the lockdown in March, you know, it made me sit down and really, really reevaluate, you know, what I could do to help people um, understand more about the virus, but also understand how to stay healthy, how to boost their immune system, how to stop stress taking over. Yeah. Um, and I know that so many people have suffered from mental health issues um, during during these measures that we've been forced to take. Um, and it's really important that, you know, that we all help as much as we can to get people back to normal health while we're still in the middle of it, you know, and just not to let it bring us down and be the main focus of our attention. Yeah. Well, that is, that is our goal is to start lifting people up and empowering them to take control of what they can control. And as you've pointed out, you can control your mindset. You can control, you know, a, at least some of your movement within your own home. So, Friends, I hope that this has been a little bit inspiring. There is so much more to dive into with Dr. Margot. So check out her website, drmargolivingston.com and get a copy of the book, Holistic Healing. So you can read more about all the epiphanies that she discovered from childhood to now and how it's impacted not only her health, but now the health of the clients that she works with in countries all over the place. Dr. Margot, thank you again for your contribution to this book. I, I know that it will inspire people and may you continue to prosper and be blessed in your work.
Thank you so much, Andrea. It's really been a privilege um, to, to work with you, um, to meet all the other fantastic people that are co-authors of the book. Um, I, you know, I'm constantly moved, you know, by everybody's stories, and I just feel very blessed to be part of this community. And together, we can really, really help people all over the world. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. So there you have it, my friends. Remember that you are a gift to the world and you have the power to heal holistically. Until next time, be well.